everyone, I am your produce guy and today I want to talk to you about an entire category of squash, winter squash. Now winter squash is differentiated from summer squash. Summer squash would include zucchini, yellow squash, those thin skin squashes that are not able to be stored. You can keep them in your refrigerator for a short while, but not like these hard skinned winter squashes. They'll store up to five months, some of these, just in your basement, unrefrigerated. So they're excellent for storing. Uh, you grow them in the summer. If you have grown these or want to grow these, they're a great little project. They grow like pumpkins. They need a little bit of space, but you can certainly organize your garden and grow some of these wonderful squashes that then you can store into the winter. Now, if you grow them, you'll need to know that there is a curing period involved, which means when you pick one of these squashes, you want to bring it into the house at room temperature and let it set out for about 10 to 20 days before you put it away to store it. That curing process allows the skin on the squash to harden up, and in many of these varieties it actually develops more sweetness and flavor in the squash. I've got 13 different varieties of winter squash here. Let's go through them real quick. Let's start here with the first one, delicata squash. This is an heirloom squash. This has been around a long time. Uh, this squash is unique in that the skin is actually edible. The rest of these, the skin is not. But on this one, you can eat the skin. And as a consequence of that softer, more edible skin, it doesn't store as well. So we're kind of going to go through these as the shorter storage to the longer storage squashes. So that delicata, delicious uh, flesh inside, but uh, edible skin. That's what differentiates that one in an heirloom variety. Here's a gold nugget squash. This is a little, like a little tiny pumpkin, this one. Uh, delicious. You can cut it open, scoop out the seeds, fill it with butter, brown sugar, and bake that up. The next two are related. They are acorn squashes, or when, uh, when I worked in the produce department, we called these table queen squashes. It kind of looks like a crown there. Now, this is the common variety of the table queen. It, when I bought this, it was actually solid green, and it's very available. You can buy this just about any time year-round in the produce department. You can see, though, that after I've had it a couple of weeks, it's continuing to ripen up here and uh, turning that orange color. I've also got this white table queen squash, and you would use these both the same. They've got a seed cavity in the center, and you can open those up. These can be roasted, uh, baked, or uh, even done in the microwave. Carnival squash, that's this one right here. It's beautiful uh, yellow and green on the outside. Very similar flavor to the Table Queens and similar usage there. Uh, the next varieties are uh, from a class called the Buttercup squashes, which includes, this one is actually a Buttercup or called a Kabocha squash. The word kabocha is Japanese, which literally translates squash. So if this is a kabocha squash, it's a squash squash. Uh, this next one is a turban squash. Now this is just fascinating how this thing grows and the colors on it. It makes a wonderful holiday centerpiece. It can also be, the top can be cut off and hollowed out there and you could serve soup or dip or something else in it. Be very interesting there. This next one is, is also one of the common squashes you'll find in the produce department along with the acorn squash. This is the butternut squash. I love this squash. Uh, it's great. It's got a seed cavity inside of this bulb end down here, but this neck is totally squash, solid squash there. You'll see a lot of recipes for butternut soup squash. It's great roasted. I used it in a pan fry like a potato. The next one is, uh, is a terrific squash, the spaghetti squash. Now this is a little bit unique. To pick out a fresh one of these, or a ripe one of these, uh, the yellower the better in this case. But this squash, when you slice it open and bake it or, or boil it, uh, the, the flesh actually, uh, you can string it out, take a fork and string it out and it makes like spaghetti strings, hence the name spaghetti squash. So you can use this in place of a pasta. Wonderful. Okay, this next one, 
I don't know if you've seen before, this is a banana squash. It is quite common in the produce department, but it's usually sold in pieces. So uh, in the produce department, we'd cut these up and sell pieces of it out there because most people don't want to buy uh, 10 pounds of banana squash to use all at one time. Of course, familiar to everyone is uh, pumpkin. Pumpkin is a, is a winter squash. And the rule of these winter squashes is the larger the squash, the longer the storage period. So we've got these smaller squashes that need to be used a little sooner. Some of these others, including this next one, can be stored for up to five months down in your... Uh, in the case of here in Utah, we store them in our basements. This one is a Hubbard squash. Now, you probably can't find this at the grocery store. I had to go to a produce stand to find this one. This squash comes in two sizes, big and ginormous. This was the smallest one in there. Many of those uh, Hubbard squashes that they had in the bin were, uh, I'm not kidding, they were, they were probably 25 to 30 pounds. Some of those squashes, huge, huge things. This is uh, uh, terrific, again, for the storage and has a wonderfully sweet flavor. The longer you store it, the sweeter it gets. This last one is a Hubbard, a variation on a Hubbard squash. It's in the Hubbard family. This one is called a sweet meat squash. You can see it has the same coloration as the Hubbard. This thing is dense though. This, this weighs a ton. So, uh, same thing. Long storage, sweeter as, as you store it. So, that's our, now these aren't all the varieties. I've got 13 here. There's uh, two or three or a dozen maybe more uh, varieties of winter squash, which are terrific. Uh, in, the, in the past, to prepare them, cut them in half, scooped out the seeds, and fill them with butter, brown sugar, and put them in the oven to bake. And then everyone gets a half a squash, and it's really good. But there's so many other things you can do with these. And in uh, future videos, we're going to take each one of these and make a recipe with it and do something a little bit different. And I think you're going to love it. So that's our winter squash expose or uh, squash o rama today. Thanks for being with us. Remember to get regular updates, subscribe. Thank, thanks to all our, our friends and subscribers for keeping up with us. Join us also on Facebook. I am your produce guy, reminding you that fresh is best. This is why they call it a turbine squash. Hello everyone, I am your produce guy. And today we're going to make a guacamole. You know I love guacamole and salsa. If you've seen my videos, I have a lot of recipes for those. This is a great one because it takes two great tastes, and now they're going to taste great together. We're going to have some pomegranate guacamole.